The tropical wave trend across the Atlantic and the Caribbean continues, what well, that could mean for additional tropical development. Your forecast across the Caribbean and the Bahamas starts right now. This is Meteo Mundo. Hi everyone, Rusty back here at Media Mundo. Hope you're doing well on a Wednesday. If you've been looking for your daily weather forecasts across the Caribbean and the Bahamas and all the tropical updates across the Atlantic Basin, that is what we do here at Media Mundo. Appreciate you tuning in. What do you say we get right into our video on this Wednesday? We'll start you off with our broad perspective. This is our enhanced infrared satellite imagery, all the live lightning data here at Media Mundo and the numbers that you see, those are wind gusts. First area we'll get into on this Wednesday is in the southwest side of the Caribbean. This is our tropical disturbance, which yesterday we had that yellow area from the National Hurricane Center for potential tropical development. If you notice now, when I zoom back out, you see no yellow area through Central America and the Yucatan. This does not look like it's going to develop. That's Great news, meaning we're not going to get a depression or a tropical storm that would be named out of this disturbance. But it is still going to be a big rainmaker for Central America and portions of the Yucatan. You can already see some of the showers here. The X marks the spot for the center of circulation, but well ahead of it. We've had a lot of rain already slam into coastal sides of Nicaragua and Honduras, back down towards Costa Rica. Panama is going to get wet again. And all of this activity, all this wet weather will continue to spread north and west. So through Nicaragua and Honduras and eventually El Salvador and Guatemala and Belize and the Yucatan. So for my friends north and west of here, we're going to get into it here later in the video, but it's going to turn even wetter. Now, we've even had a few storms this afternoon up at Quintana Roo here at the Yucatan, a few storms near Tulum, a little bit towards Cancun and Cozumel. It's been a little bit more inland towards Merida, down towards Campeche. But the bottom line is we've had a few active showers and storms there as well. Again, a few winds here and there, 20 to 25 miles an hour. Still been basically dry for our friends in the Cayman Islands. We're trying to get a little rogue shower there, sneaking over Grand Cayman. If we had a little brief shower there, it's better than what it's been lately. And on the northern periphery of this tropical disturbance, which again is not going to develop, but we are getting better opportunities now for some storms over Jamaica. I mentioned that for my friends in Jamaica yesterday. You can see those storms beginning to develop right now. Going to also throw on the feels like temperatures here real quickly. Going to get an idea again. Baking hot in Jamaica until the storms come in. Montego Bay, certainly some rain. Cambridge, central part of the island. Mandeville, Santa Cruz, Maypin, all look an opportunity for a shower there storm. My friends in Jamaica, let me know how it's going. It brushed Kingston, Old Harbor, probably had a little bit of rain, Spanish Town and Portmore. But I mean, like when you get into Kingston proper, you're talking about the eastern edge of that thunderstorm that has developed. The temperature dropped a little bit there, but not much. And again, these are feels like numbers. 110 is 43.3 degrees Celsius. So an extremely hot day there. Storms are becoming very active across Cuba. Before they really got rolling, we had Feels like temperatures 105 to 110, but these storms are becoming more numerous in nature. A little bit more active pattern here. Certainly, central western Caribbean. We'll get into the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos coming up. A little bit drier off towards our east. So, better storms right now through portions of the Turks and the Caicos. Just trying to get a little bit of rain there. It's been much more active, though, in the Dominican Republic and Haiti for today. Again, just more widespread showers and storms where it's not raining. You guys know. 105, 110, even close to 115 for feels like temperature. But we're getting a few storms east of Port au Prince, a couple down towards Lakai right now, Santo Domingo, uh, uh, Samana. It looks like we're still dry in Santiago de los Caballeros, but we're getting a few storms trying to ramp up there. Now, we switch over to Puerto Rico and the U.S. and the British Virgin Islands, and I'm going to switch over to the visible satellite imagery. We've had a couple of storms towards Arecibo today, kind of the north central, northeast sides of the islands towards Isabella. Feels like temperature there dropping in accordance with the clouds and a little bit of showers still baking hot in places like San Juan. We're still hot for my friends in Tortola and St. Thomas and St. John and St. Croix. We still have our fresh easterly winds as well, but rain chances quite limited. I'm going to go back over here real quick just to show you the drier air that is in place. And the reason why is we actually have a 
mid-level area of low pressure here, right? It's not going to become anything tropical, but it is spinning and pulling in some drier air to the south and to the east. Bermuda has seen some very dry conditions and not a lot of rain lately as well. And there's just a twinge of Saharan dust that has snuck its way back into the Lesser Antilles. So you might even see a little bit of haze in these locations. But the bottom line is rain chances for today are relatively few and far between. Not going to rule out a couple of quick passing showers in Guilla and St. Martin and Barbuda and Antigua, Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, but it's relatively quiet out there, guys. And again, feels like temperatures in the 90s. Look, some of you told me yesterday, Rusty, we enjoyed a beautiful day. We, and part of the reason why is that Debbie has actually yanked some moisture away from some of the greater Antilles. OK, uh, but that doesn't last long when you're talking about being here in August in our part of the world. Martinique, St. Lucia, Barbados, again, feels like numbers approaching 100 degrees Fahrenheit. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Trinidad and Tobago, trying to get a couple of showers there over Trinidad. Let me go back over to the enhanced satellite imagery. Now, most of this is going to be mainland South America, but a couple could sneak over there. Places like Nueva Esparta could catch a brief shower. And again, roasting hot before a few of those clouds and a brief isolated shower across the island. It's been nice again to talk about the rain we've had in the ABC Islands, but that's going by the wayside over the next few days. So now it's about the heat and the breeze again. We have uh, strong winds here from time to time, and those windy uh, conditions will continue. Gusts 20 to 25 miles an hour and isolated higher as well. So now we're gonna get into what's going on with Debbie and a few of the showers and storms that have been drifting across portions of the Northwest Bahamas again for today. And you can see that places like Eleuthera and Cat Island down towards Exuma and Andros and New Providence there, Nassau, pretty good rain. My friends in the Bahamas, let me know how it's going there. This is the satellite presentation, but I'm going to switch on over to our radar here at Media Mundo, drop off the satellite real quickly. And again, you can see on the radar presentation, storms still moving in kind of from west to east, just like they did yesterday. Relatively slow movement. It could produce some locally heavy rainfall across Andros and New Providence. And again, Cat Island and Eleuthera, decent rain for Abaco. We've had a couple of showers trying to drift over Grand Bahama. There's more on the way, though. And some of this has kind of, again, and scraping off of the southeast side of Florida will try and roll through. But of course, this is all on the far tail end of Tropical Storm Debbie, which unfortunately has played out like we expected. And that has been horrible news for southeast Georgia, South Carolina, portions of North Carolina. Again, all the winds here, we've actually had some tornadic activity as those spiral bands have come back on shore. Debbie, again, is uh, getting stronger now that it's back offshore. Again, the latest advisory here, this is going to be the 5 p.m. Wednesday advisory. Winds are 60 miles an hour again right now, right? And the other big thing here, and again, I could just pull up the advisor from the National Hurricane Center, pressure 995. But the bigger thing is to get back to this rainfall. And again, they're still talking about uh, produce an additional three to nine inches, locally higher amounts, maximum storm totals of 25 inches in eastern South Carolina and 15 inches in southeast North Carolina. That's two feet of rain, okay? It's 250 millimeters for every 10 inches. So they're talking about maybe over 500 millimeters, maybe close to 750 millimeters of rain. Exceptional flooding. They've used the words historic and catastrophic. Debbie will finally begin to pick up a little bit of forward speed tomorrow and then move through North Carolina and the Appalachians in general as it pushes off to the north and to the east. But it's been a horrible situation there. But our area has continued to see some rain back down into the northwest Bahamas associated with that. Okay. So we're going to get to the forecast portion of the video for you right now. Of course, I appreciate the support. Thanks for liking this video. Again, if you're looking for your daily forecast across the Caribbean of the Bahamas, thank you for subscribing. You also know I love to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comment section below what's been happening in your area. And again, thank you for all the ways that you support me here at Media Mundo. So mention the tropical wave train. Well, obviously this one in the Southwest Caribbean shows very little signs of development. Look again, a tropical wave is an elongated area of showers and storms. And this is still gonna bring really wet weather to Central America and the Yucatan. We're just not gonna get a wrapped up low level center of circulation. However, again, 
Here's another extremely robust tropical wave in the main development region of the Atlantic, which is going to deserve our attention here over the next seven to 10 days. And there is yet another one about ready to pull back offshore, okay? Now we're going to get a little bit more localized rain in portions of the uh, Leeward Islands coming up, but this wave will bear watching as well as the one coming back off the West Coast. And we're gonna take a look at some of the extended forecasts as we get into mid-August coming up. First things first though, I'm gonna pull up our friend, the GFS model. We're gonna go on out, uh, let's see here, today being the seventh, what do you say we go out five days? And of course, if you stick around after we take a look at this broad area, we're gonna go island by island with your rainfall forecast over the next three days as well. So let's first of all talk about our disturbance here. It is going to continue to, again, throw a lot of moisture in the area. Now, there'll be some drier air behind it, but over the next 48 to 72 hours, Nicaragua and Honduras and El Salvador and Guatemala and Belize and the Yucatan will all get wetter. Some of this could be fairly heavy rainfall. Again, that is the localized features of these. We're going to have some heavy rain in some spots. We're going to have lighter rain in others. Is there a flood potential? There is but it's gonna be very locally dependent. Landslides and mudslides will come along for the ride. I think now, because we're not gonna get a low level of circulation, we're looking at more likely 50 to 100 millimeters of rain in these areas, that's two to four inches, but locally higher amounts. There will be at least be some forward speed. This disturbance will be moving fairly quickly north and west. But again, over the next couple of days here, if I just back it up to now, and as we get into tomorrow, you can just see that rain extend north and west through Nicaragua, Honduras, Belize, El Salvador, and then we'll start to dry out a little bit here, uh, portions of Mexico will get wetter towards the end of this forecast, but at least through late Friday and into Saturday, we're going to have darn wet weather here across this area. We'll just go ahead and swing our way back off towards the east, and that's how we'll just kind of cover this. Again, Cuba will just continue to see localized showers and storms just like I have for today. Unfortunately for my friends in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, because this is not going to get wrapped up and it's actually moving slightly further to the south. This will still bring decent rain chances, just not as elevated as I was hoping for yesterday. So again, we've had a blow up of a few storms over Jamaica for today. The moisture quality is a little bit higher. Grand Cayman had at least a brief shower. The opportunity is gonna be there. Still not gonna be island-wide rainfall here, guys. We're not just gonna get hit in the face with a big slug of tropical moisture. That's gonna stay off to the south, but improving rain chances from what we had earlier in the week. Now, a place that's actually gonna dry out a bit, of course, as Debbie pulls away, we will see the Northwest Bahamas get drier. We haven't had a ton of rain in the central and especially the Southeast Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos lately as well. It's also gonna come with a south wind. So guess what? It's gonna be pretty darn humid outside for the Bahamas the next few days, but we're just gonna be drying out as well. Our friends in Bermuda, which have been very dry lately as well, and some of you have dropped in the comments how crunchy the grass is and just you could use some of this tropical moisture. Unfortunately, Debbie might throw a little bit more your way, but again, nothing in a direct fashion. Debbie's gonna go too far to your north and to your west. The areas that have been drier, lately, and that's the eastern side of the uh, Caribbean here, this is the area that's going to start to get wetter. Again, more tropical moisture coming in, more tropical waves. So the bottom line is for Hispaniola and Puerto Rico and the U.S. and British Virgin Islands and the Lesser Antilles in general, between now and Saturday, rain chances in general will only improve. Some spots, the best rain chance will be Friday. Others, the best rain chance is gonna be on Saturday. Now on the GFS model that I'm showing you right now, just to point out for the Windward Islands, rain chances look to be very elevated on Saturday the 10th as this moisture begins to stream in. So places like St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados, Nueva Sparta, Suriname, Guyana, all healthy rain chances, some heavier downpours, not really getting really worried about flooding at this point in time, I'll keep an eye on it for you here. But as I switch over to the NAM uh, to kind of pick up from there, so we're gonna go over to the NAM model here. And again, just gonna extend this back out to the same time frame. Again, a little bit better on these uh, tropical waves coming through. We'll just see, again, improving rain chances as this loops up through Saturday for Martinique and Dominica and Montserrat and Guadalupe and St. Vincent and the, excuse me, uh, St. Kitts and Nevis. 
wrong area, no big deal. Antigua, Barbuda, St. Bartholomew, Anguilla, St. Martin, and Saba. And this just all rolls off towards the west. So St. Thomas, St. Croix, St. John, Roadtown, the British Virgin Islands, Hispaniola, Dominican Republic, and Haiti, and even the eastern side of Cuba and the Turks and Caicos, all with improving rain chances. Is this going to develop and become a tropical disturbance? Does not look like it. There is no tropical development expected over the next seven days. But just beyond that time frame, there are signals for a better chance for that. So again, on the NAM model, we can clearly see the next wave coming in, and we can clearly see the rain moving in from east to west. Again, fairly fast movement of this wave will also bring about rougher surf and sea conditions as well. So let's break down your rain chance over the next three days here across our area, starting off with the Northwest Bahamas. Again, as Debbie pulls to the north, rain chances should drop a little bit, especially into Saturday. Central and Southeast Bahamas are just kind of stuck right now with some drier air and nothing organized to bring areas, uh, bring, to the, bring rain to those areas of a higher chance. Turks of the Caicos, just about a 30% chance. More localized showers and storms across Cuba. Cayman Islands, again, best chance tomorrow, Friday, as that disturbance, and again, not directly impacting us, will be moving away. Rain chances drop. However, in Belize City, it is going to get wet. A 40% chance for tomorrow, but up to an 80% chance on Friday, still a 60% chance on Saturday. Cancun and Cosmo, which has been north of most of that moisture, will have a very healthy 60% chance on Friday and still 40% chance on Saturday. Jamaica's rain chances are decent. 50% chance tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, a 40% chance. There's your ramped up rain chances across the Dominican Republic, Haiti as well. Puerto Rico's rain chances come improved as, uh, as well. U.S. and the British Virgin Islands, a 60% chance Friday and Saturday. Bermuda still pockets of rain, but nothing gnarly, nothing to really help us out with the water tables there. Anguilla, 40% chance Thursday, 70% chance Friday, 60% chance on Saturday. You're going to see rain chances like this for the entire Lesser Antilles, including St. Kitts and Nevis, Antigua, Barbuda, Montserrat, Guadalupe, Dominica, Decent chances on Thursday. Don't know why I have an eye in there. Apologize for that. But higher rain chances Thursday and Friday overall. St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines will actually have even a better rain chance tomorrow. And then the rain chances stay elevated Friday and into the weekend. Barbados actually starts off relatively dry, and then here comes that tropical wave, 60% chance on Saturday. Again, some of that moisture could be lifting from south to north as well. So notice that there'll be a little bit higher rain chances for Grenada, Trinidad, and Tobago on Friday compared to Barbados, but again, a higher rain chance on Saturday. Look, here's the bottom line, and this was a, a hard forecast to kind of snuff out island by island for the weekend. The rain chances will be there. Again, not everyone is going to get the heavy downpours. Not, not everyone's going to get the rain every day, but the chance overall is pretty darn high in these areas for Friday and Saturday. Suriname and Guyana as well. Nueva Esparta's rain chances improve. And unfortunately, our friends in the ABC Islands will be on the drier side through the weekend ahead. Okay, now we're going to get into the tropical part of this discussion. As I have mentioned again, we're going to continue to watch these waves rolling in. And although, right, there's no tropical development expected over the next seven days, both the global models, the GFS and the European model, signal some pretty darn active weather for mid-August. So we're talking about beginning in about seven days, but really as we get towards that 10-day time frame. So I'm gonna go back over here to our GFS model and this is going to be the deterministic. And again, we're going to look at the ensemble members after this as well. So let me, let's see here. Today's the seventh. I'm just going to take it out to the 17th. Okay. And this is going to be the GFS deterministic, meaning it's the, the main model that runs. Then there are 51 ensembles of both the GFS and some of the European. And we're going to look at those ensemble members coming up after this as well. But I want you to notice that it is very clear to see that at the end of this time frame, we do have a signal here on the GFS model of potential development from that wave off the West African coast that could be ramping up through the Caribbean as we get to about day eight, day nine, day 10. Okay. So that's the first real kind of focus point or signal, as I call it, on the GFS model that we'll have to be watching for. Obviously, the tropical wave train continues, right? We're gonna at least have one ahead of this that's still gonna bring a good amount of moisture and rain across the Caribbean, the lesser greater Antilles, 
into Central America and the Yucatan as well, but there's just more signal that we're going to have an environment more conducive for development here on both the GFS and the European model as we get towards, again, seven, eight, nine, ten days from now, all right? And again, we don't really want to focus on an area right now. We don't want to focus on strength. We're more broad brushing it, right? We're more talking about the probability to get a disturbance of some kind that would be strong enough to where we'd be talking about our next named storm, which would be Ernesto, because we're not going to get Ernesto out of this one more than likely. The Hurricane Center has basically put that down, put it to rest uh, with a 0% chance. This is going to be the same model, GFS model. Now we're looking at winds, and these are surface winds. I first of all want you to notice, you're going to see a lot of purples and pinks well ahead of whatever that might be coming through. We're still going to have relatively strong east for these guys. Trade winds continue. I mean, obviously, Debbie's going to kick up surf and sea conditions and bring a lot of wind up the United States east coast as well. And again, it's going to take a little bit of time for this to fully loop up, which I hope it does so, because every so often this thing gets cranky and doesn't want to give me the full model run, but it looks like it's going to finally cooperate here. And you're going to notice that it is going to be in those last couple of days here on the northern side of the Caribbean on the GFS model where we might actually have something trying to evolve. Now, of course, if it skirts across the Greater Antilles, right, it moves over Hispaniola and moves over Cuba. Those are very mountainous land masses, islands out there. It's going to have a tougher time to be able to do so. But as I pull this out right at the very end, I mean, this is literally almost 10 days out, you can see that there's a little bit stronger signal here. And if I just, you know, for giggles, if nothing else, pull this back out here, and I query these winds, you know, you are picking up what could be a tropical storm, all right? So the signal is just higher in days 7 to 10 for the next tropical wave to be showing signs of development. Now, before I put the cart before the horse, in the shorter term, you can see all the heavier rain for Central America, especially Nicaragua South. This is in millimeters, and you can see those brighter reds. That's 75 to 100. So you know, three to four inches of rain, but there'll be some locally higher amounts. The next wave coming through brings a fair amount of rain to the Lesser Antilles, portions of Puerto Rico, the U.S. and British Virgin Islands, and the Dominican Republic. It'll be a little bit drier, a little bit farther west, a little bit farther north as Debbie pulls away. But we're going to have a lot of areas here over the next few days, 75, 100 millimeters with some locally higher totals. Okay, so we get into the GFS ensemble members, right? So these are all 51 members running. And again, relatively quiet through next Wednesday, so a week from now. But then take a look at what happens as we get towards next Thursday and Friday. So kind of, again, days 8 and 9 and 10. We can see that signal there near Cuba. We can also see more in the Western Atlantic. And you're just going to see a lot more plot points towards the end of this loop, right? It's just going to be a much more active what it looks like starting in mid-August. So again, we are going to be quiet over this weekend as far as any development. And I put this on a very slow crawl, so we're going to look at this one more time. But early next week should be relatively quiet, sands the tropical wave coming in, but again, not developing. We pick up a little bit of a signal here in the Western Atlantic beginning Wednesday and Thursday. Few more will pop up there. More are going to pop up here in the northwest side of the Caribbean. Some of those over the Bahamas. Some of those moving into the Gulf of Mexico as well. But just a more active pattern starting with days 8, 9, 10, and beyond. Now, the European model is blowing up like a Christmas tree at that same time frame. We'll start it over. There goes Debbie. Again, not developing our tropical wave right now on the southwest side of the Caribbean. And then again, same time frame, mid next week, day seven and beyond, we get a much more active signal. For the European, it's even more active in the western Atlantic, but certainly some signals into the Gulf of Mexico and some stronger signals as well. And that's all it all, that's all it is right now, friends, right? There is nothing to pinpoint. There's nothing to talk about. There's nothing in the seven day from the Hurricane Center as of now. But as I look at things to pass on to you guys, all the signaling is there that beginning about a week from now, starting in mid-August and just starting, things get more active. The waves coming off the African coast will have better chances of development. And we could be talking about several, you know, at the same point in time. Again, this is next Wednesday, so a week from now. Signals from the European model of stronger systems in the Western Atlantic, more picking up across the Straits of Florida and the Gulf of Mexico as well. So all of our area, 
We'll be paying very, very close attention for you, I promise. As I mentioned, the wave heights will be kicked up a bit as well. You can see those moving off towards the west here. This is the uh, periods, but uh, again, we can kind of translate this into uh, the heights as well. We're looking at, you know, four or five foot seas, but locally higher as those fresh easterlies come in. And these are all going to be mainly easterlies. So along the eastern side of the Bahamas, we're going to get some long period easterly swells. Thank goodness we're not in the Pacific. That would be really, really rough. They could have some potentially double digit wave heights there. Okay. Appreciate you guys tuning into this video, but you know you can find us across all social media as well. Here are our social media handles, Instagram, Maya Media Mundo, TikTok, it's Media Mundo. And we've really had some uh, great improvement with our views and followers on TikTok, so thank you for finding us there. X, Facebook, you wanna send me a picture or video, it is mymediamundo at gmail.com. Again, you have a specific question about the forecast, all you have to do is drop it in the comments section below. And of course, while you're down there, thank you so much for supporting me here at Media Mundo by liking this video and of course subscribing to the channel if you've gotten anything out of this. You know, I'll keep you updated. I'll be back tomorrow, so have a great rest of your Wednesday and I will see you tomorrow, friends, right here at Media Mundo.